In this video, we're going to be learning about how to use tables of ordered pairs to draw graphs. We're going to start off by taking a quick look at the process you need to follow when you're going to do this. So in order to use tables of ordered pairs to draw graphs, the first thing you need to do is you need to generate a table of ordered pairs for the given equation. So you're going to be given an equation in the form of y equals 2x plus 3 or something along those lines, and you're going to need to generate a table of ordered pairs for that equation. Once you have done that, you then need to use the ordered pairs in the table to plot points on a Cartesian plane. And then once you've got your points plotted, you're going to need to join those points with a line or a curve with arrowheads on both ends to form a graph. And then you can go and label your graph with the equation that you started with. Okay, so let's have a look at our first example for today. In this example, we have to complete the table and then draw the graph for this equation over here, y equals x plus 3. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to complete this table by using each of the x values in the table to find out what the corresponding y value is to get the ordered pairs that we're going to be using in order to draw our graph. Okay, so the first x value we've got over here is negative 3. So if x is negative 3, I'm going to have negative 3 plus 3, that gives me 0. So y will be 0 if x is negative 3. If x is negative 2, I'll have negative 2 plus 3, so y will be 1. Then if x is negative 1, I'll have y equal to negative 1 plus 3, which is 2. If x is 0, I have 0 plus 3, so my y value will be 3. If x is 1, I'll have 1 plus 3, so my y value will be 4. If x is 2, I will have 2 plus 3, so my y value will be 5. And if x is 3, then I'll have 3 plus 3, so my y value will be 6. So now I've got all the uh, ordered pairs in this table over here that I'm going to be using to plot my graph. So now I need to get my Cartesian plane ready. So over here I've got my Cartesian plane, and here I've got the table that we just completed. So I'm going to be using the x and y values in this table to plot my point. So the first point that I'm going to get is from over here, where x is negative 3 and y is 0. Those go together. That's an ordered pair. So negative 3, 0. If x is negative 3 and y is 0, that's going to be on the x-axis over there at negative 3. The next one, if x is negative 2 and y is 1, then x is negative 2 over here, y is 1 over there. That means I have this point over here. Then if x is negative 1 and y is 2, that's going to be this point over here. Then if x is 0 and y is 3, that's going to be this point over there. Then if x is 1 and y is 4, I'm going to have this point over here. And then if x is 2 and y is 5, I'll have this point over there. And then if x is 3 and y is 6, here's x is 3 and y is 6. That's my point over there. So that is what all of the points look like if I plot them from this table. Now, the reality is when you have an equation like this, y equals x plus 3, this is not discrete data because I could have any x value that I could put into here. I could put x values in that are not whole numbers. I could put in x values of a half or a quarter or two and a three quarters or anything like that. I can put in any x value and calculate a corresponding y value. So the, the points that we've got over here are not the only points that exist as a result of this equation. We could plot an infinite number of points for an infinite number of x values for this particular equation. So when we draw this as a graph, we need to show that. And to show that, we look at the, the points we've plotted and we see, okay, well, they are a straight line like this, which means that it doesn't matter what x value I choose, it would, all the points that I end up with would fall into this straight line. So if I join this up, I'm going to end up with something that looks like this. And I put arrows on to show that it can go to infinite negative x values and to infinite positive x values. And it can be any x value in between as well. So the graph over here is showing that I can have any x value. And for any x value, the corresponding y value will fall on this line like this. So if I were to take an x value of negative 7, and I were to work out the corresponding y value, I would get negative 7 plus 3, that gives me negative 4. So if I go and look over here, if x is negative 7 and y is negative 4, that gives me this point over here, which is on the line that we have now drawn. So it doesn't matter what x value we choose, 
the x and y values that result with that x value will form a, a point that will lie on this line that we have now drawn over here. Okay, so once you've plotted your points, you then draw a line to show the shape of the graph. In this case, it is a straight line. Okay, and we put arrows on the ends to show that it can continue going forever in the negative direction and continue, can continue going forever in the positive direction as well. Okay, and then we also need to label the graph with the equation to, it's like giving it a name, saying this particular line over here is defined by that equation, where every single y value is the result of taking any x value and adding 3 to it. Okay, so that is how you draw a graph. Now you're going to do one for yourself. The first one you're going to do is this one over here. You need to complete the table and then draw the graph for the equation y equals negative 2x. You're going to follow the same process that we did in the last example. You're first going to go and complete the table by working out all the y values that correspond to these x values that you've been given. And then you need to go and plot the points on the Cartesian plane. If you have got the worksheets that go with this lesson, you can use the Cartesian planes that are provided for you. Otherwise, you'll need to draw them for yourself. And then you need to go and join up your points and label the graph. Okay, so I'm going to give you three minutes to work on this graph. Okay, so let's go through that example and see what you should have got. So first of all, we're going to fill in these values over here. So if x is negative 3, we have negative 2 multiplied by negative 3. That gives us a y value of 6. Then if x is negative 2, we have negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. If x is negative 1, we have negative 2 times negative 1 giving us a y value of positive 2. If x is 0, we have negative 2 multiplied by 0, which gives us a y value of 0. 
If x is 1, we have negative 2 times 1, giving us negative 2. If x is 2, we have negative 2 times 2, giving us a y value of negative 4. And then finally, if x is 3, we have negative 2 multiplied by 3, giving us a y value of negative 6. So that's what your table should look like. Now let's go and draw our graph. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do now that we've got our table is we need to go and plot our points. So I've got negative 3, 6 over here. So if x is negative 3, y is 6. So it's going to be up there. Okay, then the next one, if x is negative 2, y is 4. So over here I've got negative 2 and y is 4. So that's going to be over there. Then if x is negative 1, y is 2. So that's going to be this point over here. And then if x is 0, y is also 0. So it's going through the origin, the point where x and y are both equal to 0. Then if x is 1, y is negative 2. So we have this point over here. If x is 2, y is negative 4, this point over here. And then if x is 3, y is negative 6. So we have this point over here. So now we've plotted all the points that we have from our table over here. The next thing we need to do is we need to join this up. You can see if you look at it that it is a straight line. So when I join it up, I'm going to get a straight line like this with arrows on the two ends. Because remember, your x values and your y values can continue going forever in uh, both positive and negative directions. And then we also are going to label our graph with the equation. So over here, I've got y equal to negative 2x, like that. So that's we should have got for activity 1. Okay, so now let's go and have a look at an example with a different kind of equation from the ones that we've done so far. So in this example over here, I've got y equals negative x squared plus 3. I need to draw the graph for this equation. So this is different because of that square. And it's going to make our graph look very different. Okay, so first of all, we're going to start off in the same way that we did with the previous examples. We're going to find the y values that correspond to the x values we've been given in this table. So I'm going to go and use substitution to do that. So I've got y equals negative x squared plus 3. If x is negative 3, when I substitute it in, it's going to look like this. Remember, you need to make sure that you use brackets. So if I square that negative 3, it's going to give me positive 9. But because I still have the negative over here in front of that, it's going to give me negative 9 plus 3, which means that y is going to be equal to negative 6. So if x is negative 3, y is equal to negative 6. And using the same concept, I'll do the same thing to find the x, the y value that corresponds to x equals negative 2. So if x is negative 2, I substitute that in, I square it and I get 4, but because of the negative in front, it is negative 4 plus 3, which gives me negative 1 for my y value. So if x is negative 2, y is negative 1. Then if x is negative 1, I get negative and then negative 1 squared plus 3. That gives me negative and then 1 plus 3, which is negative 1 plus 3, giving me a y value of 2. So if x is negative 1, y is 2. Then if x is 0, I get negative 0 squared plus 3. That gives me negative 0 plus 3, but negative 0 is the same as 0. So it's just 0 plus 3, which gives me a y value of 3. If x is 1, I get y equals negative, and then in brackets, 1 squared plus 3. That gives me negative, and then 1 plus 3, which is negative 1 plus 3, which if I simplify, will give me 2. So if x is 1, then y is equal to 2. If x is 2... I will get y equal to negative and then in brackets 2 squared plus 3. That gives me negative and then 4 plus 3, which is just negative 4 plus 3 simplifying to give me negative 1. So if x is 2, y is equal to negative 1. And then the last one, if x is 3, I will get y equals negative and then in brackets 3 squared plus 3. If I simplify that, I will get negative and then 9 plus 3 which is negative 9 plus 3, and if I simplify that, I will get negative 6. So if x is 3, y is equal to negative 6. So that's what my table looks like once I have worked out all of the y values. Now let's go and have a look at what the graph is going to look like. So over here, I'm going to be plotting on my Cartesian plane. The first point is where x is negative 3 and y is negative 6. So over here, if x is negative 3 and y is negative 6, that's going to be this point down here. Then if x is negative 2 and y is negative 1, it's going to look like that over there. So I've got a point negative 2, negative 1 over there. Then if x is negative 1, y is 2. So that's going to be this point over here. Then if x is 0, y is 3. That's going to be this point over here. Then if x is 1, y is 2. So if x is 1, y is 2. That's this point over here. Then if x is 2, y is negative 1 here that point over there 
and then if x is 3, y is negative 6. So that's going to be this point down here. Okay, so now this graph you can see is very different to the ones we did before. This is not forming a straight line, it's not linear. Now this graph we're going to join up with a curve and it's going to look like this. Okay, putting arrows on both ends like that, just like we did with the previous one. Because just like with the previous one, you can put in any x value and you will get a corresponding y value. Okay, so that is what our graph looks like for this equation. And then we need to go and label our graph just like we did with the other ones that we did. So this is y equal to negative x squared plus 3. Okay, so now you're going to do an example for yourself. So here you've got the equation y equals x squared minus 5, and you need to complete the table and then draw the graph for this equation, doing the exact same thing that we did in the last example. So I'm going to give you three minutes to work on this example. Okay, so let's see what you should have got for this example. So first of all, to work out all the y values, we're going to be using substitution. So I'm going to substitute in my first x value of negative 3. That gives me y equals, in brackets, negative 3 squared minus 5. Now when you square the negative 3, you should have got positive 9 minus 5, giving you a y value of 4. So if x is negative 3, y is 4. Then the next one, x is negative 2, so we're going to have y equal to negative 2 in brackets squared minus 5. When we square the negative 2, we're going to get positive 4 minus 5, giving us a y value of negative 1. So if x is negative 2, y is negative 1. Then if x is negative 1, we're going to have y equal to negative 1 squared minus 5. That gives us 1 minus 5, which is y equals negative 4. So if x is negative 1, y is equal to negative 4. Then if x is 0, we get 0 squared minus 5 which is just going to give us negative 5. So if x is 0, y is negative 5. 
Then if x is 1, we have 1 squared minus 5, that's 1 minus 5 gives us negative 4. So if y, x is 1, then y is negative 4. Then if x is 2, I have 2 squared minus 5, that gives me 4 minus 5, so y is equal to negative 1. So if x is 2, y is negative 1. And then the last one, if x is 3, then I have 3 squared minus 5, that gives me 9 minus 5, so y is equal to 4. So if x is 3, then y is 4. Okay, so that's what your table should look like. Now let's go and do our graph. So on the Cartesian plane, your point for negative 3, 4 should be over here, like that. Your point negative 2, negative 1 should be over here, like that. Your point negative 1, negative 4 should be like this over here. Your point 0, negative 5 should be over here, like that, on the y-axis. Your point 1, negative 4 should be over there. Your point 2, negative 1 should be over here. And the last one, the point 3, 4 should be over here. So this one, you can see you've also got that curve, but it's an upside down version of what we had in the last example. So when you join it up, it should look like this. Okay. And then you just need to make sure that you put your arrows on and you need to go and label your graph. And it should look like that. Y equals x squared minus 5. And that's what we should have got for that example. And that is how you use tables of ordered pairs to draw graphs. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also, be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.